The News 4 Rundown is sponsored by FH Fur. Now on the News 4 Rundown, taking executive action to fight gun violence. Details on the new office created by President Biden and who he's tapped to run it. Plus, early voting in Virginia starts today. Coming up on News 4, we are out here talking to voters about what issues they feel are most important and what you need to know before you cast your ballot. And a fan favorite's goodbye to baseball. Sean Doolittle says that he is now retiring. We take a look back at his time here in our city. You're watching the News 4 Rundown. I don't know about you, but do just kind of hits. That one hits a little hard. Thanks well. for joining us for the News 4 Rundown. Our newscast streaming for you. I'm Tommy McFly. And I'm Leon Harris. It is Friday, September 22nd, and we're going to begin with a look at the weather that's heading our way for this weekend. Mm. Storm Team 4 Chief Meteorologist Doug Camber has got a look at the forecast. Hey, Doug. Yeah, hey guys, we are tracking this storm system, Ophelia, which became a tropical storm earlier uh, on your Friday, now making its way closer to the coast now and bringing that rain our direction. We're going to see some strong winds and very heavy rain from this. As of the 5 o'clock advisory on your Friday afternoon, it was a 70 mile an hour tropical storm. Could actually come on shore as a hurricane and then move our direction, weakening quickly. But once again, it is the wind and the rain at ahead of this storm that is going to be impacting us as we make our way through the day on our Saturday. We've been talking about a nasty Saturday M coming, and that's for sure. Heavy rain overnight, heavier rain, and strong winds tomorrow. Winds could gust 30 to 40 miles an hour, much of the area under a wind advisory. Coastal flooding is likely, so heads up for that, and rain ending Sunday around noon. We're on weather alert all day Saturday, tracking this storm. Doug, thank you very much. Now, Leon, let's get a look at some of the other top stories we're following for you. A Fairfax County woman has been found guilty again in the murder of her mother and sister. Megan Hargan was convicted in the 2017 shooting of her family. Prosecutors allege that she staged the crime to make it look like a murder-suicide. Detectives later found Hargan had been trying to make about $400,000 worth of fraudulent money transfers into her bank account on the day of the shootings. Hargan was found guilty of the same crime last year, but a judge threw out that verdict over an issue with a juror. She'll be sentenced in January. The people who died in that New York City bus rollover crash yesterday were identified as two chaperones. They were the band director of the school and a retired teacher on their way to band camp. The NTSB spent the whole day at the crash site trying to piece together exactly what happened. And preliminary reports say a faulty tire was the cause. At least five students remain in critical condition. The charter bus was headed from Long Island to Pennsylvania when it ran off the highway and down into a ravine. Thousands more employees at Detroit's Big Three are walking off the job. It's the first escalation in the ongoing United Auto Workers strike. UAW's president has called on union members to strike at 38 General Motors and Stellantis facilities in 20 different states. And this includes a Stellantis facility in Winchester, Virginia, and a GM plant in West Virginia. The call to strike excludes Ford, suggesting that the UAW is more satisfied with the progress on a new contract with that automaker. The union is seeking several things, including a 40% increase in hourly pay and a reduced 32-hour work week. President Biden will be traveling to Michigan Tuesday in support of the UAW workers. And President Biden is taking action against gun violence. He says since Congress hasn't acted, he will. He created the first of its kind Office of Gun Violence Prevention and Vice President Kamala Harris will lead the office, which will work toward executive actions the president can take alone on gun violence and also support states efforts to do the same. After every mass shooting, we hear a simple message, the same message all over the country. I've been to every mass shooting. Do something. Please do something. On this issue, we do not have a moment to spare, nor a life to spare. Nearly 50,000 people died from shootings in 2021. More than half of those were suicides, despite polls showing public support for stricter gun laws. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers do not have the votes to pass an assault weapons ban. Meanwhile, on the Hill, the clock is ticking on a federal government shutdown. Now, if lawmakers don't reach a deal by September 30th, thousands of local federal workers are going to be feeling the impact. News 4 is working for you and putting together what you need to know if you are furloughed or if you need to file for unemployment. Here's News 4's Mark Seagraves, who has been tracking this all day with some important details. 
Hundreds of thousands of people in our region could find themselves temporarily out of work if Congress fails to reach a budget deal next week. That means hundreds of thousands of people without a paycheck. The good news is most federal workers and contractors will be eligible for unemployment benefits. The most important thing to know about unemployment insurance, you file in the jurisdiction where you go to work, not where you live. And even if you've been working from home since the pandemic, you file where your office is located. That means most people in our region, even if you live in Maryland or Virginia, will file in D.C. The day you're eligible to apply is the day the government shuts down and when the government is officially unfunded. Uh, that's when people can start submitting uh, unemployment insurance applications. Uh, to prepare in advance of this, I recommend visiting the website, checking the eligibility criteria. Dr. Unique Morris-Hughes, director of D.C.'s Department of Employment Services, has her team ramping up for what is likely to be a tidal wave of applications applications. She wants to avoid the problems so many had during the pandemic. Now we've learned a whole lot of lessons since the pandemic and let me tell you um, the District of Columbia is prepared and ready for a potential government shutdown. Uh, we have staff, we have call center staff that's ready to go. The maximum benefit for DC workers is $444 a week. Hughes says if you might be out of work because of a government shutdown, you should check out the D.C. Department of Employment Services website now to see if you'll be eligible and to familiarize yourself with the application process. In the district, Mark Seagraves, News 4. And remember, News 4 is working for you through all of this. We'll be here to bring you updates as lawmakers work to avoid the shutdown. And if it happens, we'll help you navigate how the closures impact our area and our neighborhoods. Leon? Well, Tommy, early voting has started in Virginia, and it is a big election year for the Commonwealth, with every seat in the General Assembly up on the ballot. Now, if it follows historical trends, this Virginia election could serve as an early indicator of what we can expect in the 2024 election. News 4's Amy Cho breaks down some of the biggest issues and the races and what you need to know before you head to the polls. We have been talking to voters here at the Office of Elections in Leesburg. Now, even though this is a state election, many people told us presidential politics are playing a huge factor in how they vote. All of Biden's failures, the borders, the inflation, the uh, incompetence. My leaning will be towards candidates that do not support uh, Trump. I want to vote. Exercise my constitutional right. This election is a pivotal one for Virginia. Abortion, crime, and schools, all key issues. All seats in the General Assembly are up for grabs as both parties seek the majority. Right now, Republicans control the House and Democrats control the Senate. Candidates on both sides urging folks to get out and vote. You vote for this slate of Democrats who are here today, and we're going to focus on taking care of your core quality of life. There's so much energy on the Republican side. We have a plan. Uh, we, we're getting people out to vote early. Republican Juan Pablo Segura is running for the open Senate seat in the 31st District against Democrat Russett Perry. It's one of the most expensive and highly watched races in the state and could foreshadow how things will go in 2024. <laughs> Russet Perry speaking with supporters today. She says one of her top priorities is protecting access to abortion. It's just my privilege to be able to step up for them and to make sure that they can continue to make those decisions with their doctors. Meanwhile, Juan Pablo Segura says he wants to enact a ban on abortion at 15 weeks. Abortion is obviously an incredibly personal, uh, emotional, uh, issue. I want to work with the governor and find a compassionate consensus. As the first day of early voting draws to a close here in Loudoun County, election officials say they've seen a huge turnout. Things are great. Uh, we've had over 400 voters today. Uh, last year on the first day of early voting, we had 297. So we've already blown that out of the water. If you're planning to cast your ballot in Virginia, here are the important dates you need to know. Today is when early voting begins. October 16th is the registration deadline. October 27th is the ballot request deadline or asking for a ballot to be mailed to you. November 4th is when early voting ends and November 7th is election day. Amy Cho, News 4. Loudoun County election officials say the ballot is extra long this year with more than 80 candidates. So it's taking people a while to get through the whole thing. So budget your time accordingly.
FH Fur Plumbing, Heating, Air Conditioning, and Electrical is proud to sponsor the Marine Corps Marathon, saluting those who have served and continuing our commitment to hire veterans who have inspired us for more than 40 years to serve our community to the fullest. It is our honor to say thank you. FH Fur Plumbing, Heating, Air Conditioning, and Electrical is proud to support the Marine Corps Marathon. The iPhone 15 has officially arrived. Today, the newest version of the smartphone hit the stores and was delivered to doors. If you got it online, the orders were shipped and landed nationwide. And even though it's the 15th time a new iPhone has arrived in our lives, there was still excitement. CNBC reports that the line began to form at the New York City stores at 8 o'clock last night. Good grief. Right? The prices <laughs> begin at $799. The new version of the Apple Watch also became available today, too. That's amazing. In line for, what, 14 hours to yeah. spend $800? I don't In know like, about that. Not the warmest day either to go do that. <laughs> That's true. Oh, and speaking of brand new technology, with that comes some new troubles. That's right. News Force Joseph Olmo explains why D.C. police have a warning if you plan to order any of these new items. All right, so you've pre-ordered your iPhone. You've spent over $1,000 on it. You're so excited to come home and see it on the porch, but there's one problem. It isn't even there. It's that time of the year. Today, the new iPhone 15 was released. An exciting time for Apple fans, but also time to be cautious if you plan on having it shipped to your house. Prevention is number one, right? Being able to prevent something from happening. Anthony Wash is a sergeant with DC police. He wants to make sure when the iPhone arrives at your door, it gets into your hands before anybody else's. You hear about it happening all the time. He recommends tracking the package to make sure you know the exact moment it arrives. Have a trusted neighbor pick it up if you aren't at home, or? There's also ways that you can just leave it at the post office. The post office allows you to leave packages there for up to 30 days, so you can retrieve it, you know, when you have the available time. Okay, well, here's a big secret. If you want to prevent this from happening to you, police say the best thing you can do is just order your iPhone online and do what these folks are doing. Go to the store and pick it up. I mean, if it's something like, you know, something high value, something like this, I would just go get it myself. I don't know. So I guess stay home to make sure you get your package. Big piece of advice is be a good neighbor and yeah, pick up the package. Exactly. Exactly. Joseph Omo, News 4. Thanks a lot, Joseph. And how would you like to own a piece of RBG history? One of the late Supreme Court Justice's iconic callers, it's still for sale. So Ruth Bader Ginsburg's caller did not get bids high enough at Potomac Auctions. They estimated it would be worth between $200,000 and $400,000. The necklace, gifted to Ginsburg by a fan, cost $200 originally purchased. So the caller Ginsburg wore during a rare justice portrait when Brett Kavanaugh joined the court. And it also happens to be the first day back at work after she was injured in a fall. The bids did not get to the 1,000 times the original price tag they were thinking. So the necklace is still up for direct sale. And another piece of history up for grabs, the first painting ever completed on TV by artist Bob Ross. It's <laughs> called A Walk in the Woods. And it was one of 400 paintings Ross produced on air in his TV series, The Joy of Painting. He often created scenes of streams and mountains and waterfalls and rustic cabins and, of course, those happy trees and happy accidents. Fun fact, most of his work is housed at Bob Ross, Inc. in Herndon, Virginia. Ross died at... 95. I, wa I happen to have watched that first episode last night. <laughs> Today's an exciting day at the Smithsonian American Art Museum. For the first time in three years, the galleries of modern and contemporary art are open to the public. The space has been completely renovated and the collection reimagined. News 4's Megan McGrath has the story. And as the flagship Museum of American Art, we have to tell the best story, the most inclusive story of American art, and that's what we're doing today. This is a painting by Audrey Flack called Queen. It is indisputably the most famous uh, photorealist painting she ever did. The art is bold, modern, thought-provoking. The works exclusively by American artists. The modern and contemporary art galleries at the Smithsonian American Art Museum have been completely reimagined, something that hasn't happened since 2006. We decided that the modern and contemporary art galleries needed a rethink, a reimagining of the whole story of America and, and modern art. So we closed them, we took everything off the wall, 
there were some very large pieces which we basically had to box in to keep safe during the construction and the repainting. The galleries had to be closed for three years, but the result is a beautiful space that incorporates the historic buildings, classic features with modern touches. Walls between the massive pillars are higher. There's a new lighting system and some windows were covered to allow for more display space. Giving more breathing room for the paintings and the sculptures. We've added some craft objects some photography that we've never had up on view in such large numbers. And in very simple ways, we didn't add a square foot, but we've doubled our display spaces. Old favorites, like the great electronic superhighway by Nam Jun Paik, or the great For Sam piece by Jenny Holzer, which has words dropping and circling in this great columnar uh, sculpture, but you'll find new discoveries. You'll find we've pulled out some things that have been a little hidden and also overlooked in the history of American art. So we said more women were part of this important story. More craft artists were working at this time. What about self-taught artists? Weren't they also working in the modern period? Today is the grand public reopening. And if you want to visit, the museum is open every single day except Christmas from 1130 until 7. Megan McGrath, News 4. Thank you, Megan. Now, it may not be everyone's idea of a good time. I know Leon Harris is heartbroken because people like Leon really wanted to swim in the Anacostia River. And the organizers have now had to twice cancel the splash. But they say it will happen someday. You'll get your chance, buddy, I promise. You're in line ahead of me. We know that already. Saturday's Anacostia River splash was called off due to severe weather heading our way. But here's some good news. Anacostia River keepers tell us the water quality results at Kingman Island came in four times below EPA recreational standards. Nice. And they are so excited about that after spending years working to get that river cleaned up. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, you, could, you can come with me. Yeah, okay, we'll <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> if it gets to six times, then Leon's coming along. <laughs> Still ahead on the News 4 Rundown, can the Washington Commanders go 3-0 this weekend? All right. They'll be tested by one of the best teams in the league. J.P. Finley joins us to break it all down. And Centenarian Salute, a very special birthday celebration for West Point's oldest graduate. You'll meet Colonel Herb and find out his secrets to living past 100. All right, it's that time again. The weekend is upon us. And if you haven't made plans, you are in luck because Tommy made some for you. With and without umbrella. So at least I have some spectacular ideas for you. Outdoorsy and artsy, why not do both? Okay, Saturday and Sunday is the Occoquan Fall Arts and Crafts Show. 250 artisans bringing their crafts to you. In the district, this weekend is for the dogs and their owners. Sunday, with the weather being better, you can stop by and celebrate Petworth. So it's fun, food, and of course, a dog show that's at noon and it raises money for local animal rescues or you can join the nine day celebration to bid goodbye to the national zoo's beloved giant pandas mm. that begins tomorrow although the rain that's coming in may put a damper on day one mm -hmm. the zoo's scheduled to open up at 8 a.m saturday for panda themed activities musical performances and get this an art gallery created by pandas. <laughs> All right, if you can't attend, you'll be able to participate by watching the giant panda cam. Free entry passes are required for all guests, and you can get them online. The three giant pandas will be leaving D.C. by December 7th. Oh, heartbreaking. They're so talented. They paint like Bob Ross. <laughs> and did you know we deliver the weekend scene plans to your inbox every Wednesday? I'm stalling, so you can grab your phone and scan the QR code. Bam, there it is. We will deliver those plans to you every Wednesday with the weekend scene newsletter. Easy as that. All right. Now, check this out. Finally, a salute to a centenarian. The oldest living West Point graduate in the country was honored at a senior living center in Potomac Falls, Virginia. And News 4's Juliana Valencia was there to bring us a very special 104-year-old. Proudly walking into a room on his own, greeted by cheers and applause. There's a sense of joy and vibrance to 104-year-old Herbert Stern. I'm really appreciative of these people turning out and recognizing me. Colonel Herb, as his comrades called him, honored Friday as the oldest living West Point graduate. 
and we're so happy to be able to give this to you. More than 28 years in the Army, the Rockville native is also the last living member of the 1941 class, the last graduating class before World War II. West Point graduate of 72, Bob Curran, gave him the award. He was a battery commander, he was a battalion commander, uh, he fought against the Germans, he liberated the uh, concentration camp, he studied at the French War College, he was one of the first Americans into Vietnam, he's done a lot of firsts. From battalion commander during the Battle of the Bulge to working directly with President Eisenhower on a top secret study. It took us a year and uh, we had access to things that we would have never been able to get into. A war hero to many, but a father to one. Well, this is a great honor, but what it really indicates is I've had all this time to enjoy my dad, and I really have. Uh, just an uh, amazing guy. Robert Stern's love for his dad overflowing. I'm very fortunate, and we've developed just an incredible relationship. A father who created a lasting legacy and still has a great sense of humor. I mean, I didn't do any great thing except get old. Colonel Herbert Stern will celebrate his 105th birthday this Christmas Eve. In Potomac Falls, Juliana Valencia, News 4. And we hope he keeps on getting old. Absolutely. <laughs> Colonel Herb still drives himself to the store and gets his own groceries, if you can believe it. That is some goals right there. And that'll do it for the News 4 <laughs> Rundown. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tommy McFly. I'm Leon Harris. Stay safe. We'll see you back here on Monday. Have a great weekend.